changing minds, changing attitudes, bring ourselves to live a peace and one, show some love, hold each other. Welcome to the Princess Pata Fabio Show. On this show, we change minds and change attitudes on how you perceive things in life generally. In life, we have so many questions but fewer answers on certain, certain issues that we are facing. And that's why I'm here, to give you the kind of answers that you may be looking for for the questions that you have. I am your friend, I am your sister, I am your coach. I'm here to make your day a blissful one. Welcome. We are changing minds and changing attitudes. You are watching the Princess Pata Pato Show. A lot of people say it, men say it. Oh, the girls that are in America, their eyes are open, they are this, they are wild, they will not respect me, they will not. But these are the girls that you have grown up with. Change your minds and change your attitude. Timidity. Some men living back there, they feel that a woman with a Western orientation, she's bold, she's confrontational, she's strong. She would call you out on what you've done wrong to her. They're overconfident. They would say it like it is, all right? They're just gonna tell you, no, I don't want this, this is wrong. You can do this to me. And you know that really, you can really do that to them. You can treat them any kind of way. And so that's one of the reasons that people wanna come back home to get married because they don't want a woman that can stand up to them. Brother, man, sister, girl, come on now. Things have changed. The men here, really, they're, they're different. They're even more American, more westernized than people that are living overseas. Let me break the news for you. What is in Sokoto, you can find it in New York. What you think you come to a quiet state and get it, go to Atlanta, you're gonna see it. It's right there. So stop fooling yourself and giving yourself these heartache and heartbreaks that, oh, because the women here are different than the women back home. No, they're not. I mean, people back, back home are so into designer wears. They wanna wear the Louis Vuitton, the Vandy, the Gucci, but that's not the same thing in America. America or Western culture, people are more into trying to save their money and to do things positive and contribute to humanity. Well, while you're coming home to get married, let me get you to remember this. Why you take a monkey out of the bush, maybe you put it in a zoo that is well crafted and positioned and it looks good, doesn't make the monkey to stop eating banana. And it's definitely not going to stop the monkey to jump on trees when they see trees. It's not going to stop the monkey from being a monkey. Look at it from this perspective. Just because you take a horse to the river, it's going to drink water. No, it's not going to drink water. You can't force them to drink water when they don't want to drink water. It's the same thing that is applicable to human beings. You cannot force them to change who they really are. So, understand that you can still locate a woman where you are living, in the territory where you find yourself, who understand the principles of the territory that you are living with and fall in love and be married and she understand the language of the territory rather than coming home only to get yourself disappointed and heartbroken. Control. Control. Yeah. A lot of men come home to get married for the quest of control. They want to be in control. And so the quest to have a woman that is submitted to them, they Western culture woman will not be submissive. They know what's happening here. They, can, they know the tricks. Yes, did you expect them to live in the Western world and not know the tricks and not understand how would they survive? They won't. So you coming home to come and get married because you want to be controlled, you want to be in control, you want a submissive woman doesn't mean that she's actually going to be submissive to you. What makes you think that she is submissive? And the thing about you coming home to get married is you're marrying somebody who is pretentious. You don't really know them. They are fake. At the end of the day, you're going to marry somebody and take them to where you live, in whichever country you find yourself in the Western world. At the end of the day, you find out that they were actually not submissive. And then you end up back with your ex-girlfriend. You want them back. You want to have you back. I want you back, honey. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have never gone home to get married. I have heard it happen so many times to men who go home, get married, and at the end of the day, they find out that the woman they were expecting to be this submissive, loving, caring, sugar girl was fake. A few years ago in Atlanta, Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, 
A man went home, got married, left his wife at home, and filed the papers and brought her into the United States, not knowing that this woman has been communicating with the ex-boyfriend who was living in America with no papers. Promise her heaven and earth and everything when she arrived in America. Matter of fact, the man flew in from the state that he was in to wait for her at the airport. And the husband came with the friends to receive her, only to find out that she wasn't coming to America to come and meet with him as the husband. She was coming to America to meet the ex-boyfriend who left the shores of Nigeria in quest for greener pastures that he never found. And the woman at the end of the day went home with the boyfriend. What did you expect the government to do, the law to do at that time? It didn't work. They said it was domestic. They had to go sort it out by themselves. Are you trying to tell me that that man didn't find a woman befitting for him to marry? That he could have saved himself that kind of trauma and embarrassment that he made the news? Something to think about. Culture. A lot of people get married in the quest to sustain their culture in a foreign land. Unless, if you ask me, you have somebody that is already waiting for you at home. You've been in communication, you've been writing, you've been talking, you've been emailing, whatsapping, facebooking, tweeting, instagramming each other. You still got it together. I'm going to marry you. I want to marry you. She understands you or he understands you, knows what's going on in that tradition, in that culture. Then you can go ahead and get married to that person back home. But if not, honey, marry the person that you know. Marry the person that you've met, that understands you, that knows where you are, and understand what happens where you are living in. If not, I tell you, you're setting up yourself for a big fall. You can still sustain your culture by marrying somebody from your own locality, from your own village, if that's what's going to make you happy, or from any other state in your home country that is living where you are living, rather than coming home to come and get married. I strongly believe that you can sustain culture with your children, especially if you're going to raise a family in that locality you find yourself. I believe that you can sustain culture if you marry a woman from your home country living in that locality. She speaks your language, and so definitely she will. Definitely. She will raise the children in a cultural way. Even if, excuse me, she happens not to be from or happens not to be, um, wasn't raised or groomed in the home culture, but her heritage is what it is. Trust me, I don't think the parents raised her without telling her what the culture implications are. So if you still marry a woman like that with home training, your children will be raised well and properly and well cultured. Do me a favor. A lot of us get married in the Western world and we don't bring our children home. Plan to bring your children home so that they can also experience your culture firsthand. Legacy. A lot of people come home to get married, especially if they are the only children. Another reason that people would come home to get married outside the Western culture is legacy. Especially if you're the only child. You would hear your parents would say, you can't marry somebody outside. You can't marry a foreign woman. You can't marry a woman you meet there. You have to come back home and get married. And sometimes these sons or daughters would find people that they would love to marry and have a blissful married life. But because my mother said I'm the only child, my father said I have to come back home and get married, they end up coming home to get married to people who don't love them. Neither do they love them or just people that are not even interested in what they are doing. And they are actually getting married to this girl or this guy only to leave the country that they find themselves, especially if they were not doing well in the home country. Trust me when I say you can still sustain legacy. You can still find somebody that loves you. You can still find somebody that cares. Successful marriages is not as a result of coming home to get married, but rather... It is of divine direction. It is of God being in, in it. It is of you having a relationship, a working relationship with the woman or with the man that you want to be married to. So whatever you do going on henceforth, as somebody who's living outside or living within that locality, marry somebody in your country because that's where you live. 
marry somebody in America because you live in America and you understand the culture of America. And the person you're going to marry understands you, understands the America, understand the American culture, understand the Canadian culture, knows the German culture, understand the UK culture, understand the Italian culture. Marry these people so that you would enjoy marriage because marriage was meant to be enjoyed. Marriage wasn't something that you just go in and you come out. And you notice that a lot of these women that we bring in or men that we bring in from our home country at the end of the day wants to divorce, want to file for a divorce. So you were just a means to an end. So they just actually use you to get to where you are going. One would ask me, do you really think that people would find love where they find themselves in their locality? Of course, so many people do find love. Yes, people do find love in that locality, in the country that they live in, patience. It takes a lot of patience and not allowing your libido to lead you. Allow the quality that you have for yourself, the value that you have for yourself to help you to find the man, to find a woman that will understand you and work with you to make it work. You don't have to come home to get married, especially if the person you're coming home to get married it was recommended to you by somebody else. It's not a woman that you went to go look for on your own. Remember, he that findeth a wife, find it a good thing and obtain it favor from the Lord. You are meant to find your wife. You're meant to go find her. Somebody's not recommending for you. I know you can do that. I know you can take a bold step to find, to be patient, to search, to get on your own. Not seeing people coming home to get married and they're using picture. I have seen so many things, man, in Nigeria, man. You want to use a picture. On the day of the girl's wedding, the man is not there. And the girl doesn't even know this man. You marrying the picture, you're not marrying the man. A few years ago, I counseled a young woman who got married at 18 years old. And the man left her in this state called Akwaibom State and was living in the United States. Left her for 10 years. So she waited for 10 years for a man who just came home, married her, left her here. No sex, no emotional um, fulfillment, nothing, no care. Was cheating on her night and day, sending her text messages, sending her pictures of what he's doing in America with different women. And what got me and broke my heart was the fact that the parents said it was not right for her to divorce the man. And so she should stay and wait for the man. 18 years plus 10 means she's 28 years old. A woman that is married for 10 years, no sexual consummation. On the grounds of desertion and abandonment, in the court of law, isn't that uncontested divorce? I'm just saying 10 years of no consummation of marriage and Pastors were telling her she had to be married. She had to wait for the husband. Wait for a husband who is cheating. Wait for a husband who is so callous, sending her messages that other women are sending to him or pictures of nudity of different women that he's been with. What kind of sensible man does a thing like that to a young teenager that he married and abandoned in Nigeria for 10 good years? Thank God for God. Thank God for people who were preaching the gospel for real. And finally, she filed for the divorce. And the court actually did grant her the divorce. Can I shock you? The day she walked out of the courtroom here in Uyu, she met her husband. And she got married one year after at 29 years old to the man she's married to today. And they are happy and blessed with a child. What am I saying? Don't allow anybody to use your head. Don't allow anybody to use you and keep you and while they are outside enjoying themselves. Don't even put yourself in that compromising situation where you get married to somebody from home and bring them to where you're living only to find out that all that glitters wasn't gold. I strongly believe that we can find love and that we can enjoy marriage because marriage being successful is as of divine direction. Now, after all is said and done, just because your friend came home and got married and took the friend to the country in which he lives or she lives, 
doesn't mean that yours will work out. Whatever you do, remember that you owe yourself a right to happiness and fulfillment and that nobody on planet Earth can make you happy but yourself. Remember that successful marriages is as a result of divine direction. It's not as a result of location. I leave you on this note. Marriage is not a dress rehearsal. It is a reality show. And that is changing minds, changing attitudes. Until I come again on another episode, I am Princess Pat Akhabio. And as always, please do take care of yourself. Bye for now. Peace. Things are never what they seem to be. Changing minds, changing attitudes. Bring ourselves to live a peace and one. Changing minds, changing attitudes. Bring ourselves to live a peace and one. Show some love, hold each other's hands. In confidence, we'll make the world a better place. We are changing minds and changing attitudes. You are watching the Princess Patapapio Show.